okay? Yeah. First of all, of course, thanks to organizers and thanks for inviting me in this excellent event and possibility to speak on very, very painful problem. But few words about the topic of this panel in general. So, we used to say, don't bring me my God to live during an era of big changes. But we are living during an era of big changes now. The methods of management focused on unifying the population of Europe and the world according to values of homo economicus, the self-sufficient rational consumer, are entering a systemic crisis. The economic person is not even an abstraction. It is a reduction, a flat projection of one of a set of measurements of any human being. The reality is that all people, West Europeans, East Europeans, the Chinese, Indians, Russians, cannot be reduced to the sum of their economic requirements and to functioning as consumers of goods and the benefits. Each person exists only in the interrelations and the relations with other people. And these communications are irreducible to mutual advantages or mutually acceptable economic exchange. These are social and political communications belonging to language, culture, national or subnational community, or to religious community. Both these communications and interests are unrealizable out of community out of political space. The following phenomenon is evident with the growth of integration. On the contrary, awareness of the originality increases. This, uh, known, this is a known mathematical rule. I am a mathematician by profession. The process of integration must be accompanied by the process of differentiation. I'm often using in the European Parliament where there is a big hall dedicated to famous musician Yegudi Minuhin, and uh, I had the opportunity to participate in his activities as a creator of special fund for cultures of European minorities and his words just during one of the events were as follows. Either Europe will be the Europe of cultures or Europe will die. The title of my intervention is on demonization of Russian culture, being one of cultures of Europe. There is no need to argue that the EU is infected with Russophobia. Here is just one single example of out of thousands, if technicians will show the first slide, please. Yeah. You can see is, uh, this slide the invitation to the discussion entitled Pushing Pushkin, the imperialism and decolonization of Russian culture. It was, uh, this event took place in March this year, co-hosted by two MEPs, one Lithuanian from EPP group, European People's Party, and one French MEP from Renew, from Presidential Party, Raphael Glucksmann, with two guest speakers, Edward Lucas, from Britain and Christina Sabalauska from Lithuania. So the main idea promoted by the organizers and guests of the discussion is that Russia has always used 
and continues to use any work of culture as a weapon of colonization. And therefore, the policy of exclusion for Russian culture must be carried out. In my state, Latvia, as well as in all three Baltic states, uh, this uh, burning hatred to everything Russian is irrational and caused by a complex of state inferiority of national elites. It's my opinion, of course. At this moment, the Russian minority of Latvia is on the verge of catastrophe under the blows of the decisions taken by the ruling politicians who represent exclusively the national majority. Since last spring, the situation has deteriorated significantly. The war in Ukraine served as a signal for new persecution of the Russian speakers of Latvia. If four years ago my colleague Ines Weider, a member of the European Parliament from Latvia, denounced me to the State Security Service for publicly stating that Russians in Latvia felt like Jews on the way of World War II in our country. Uh, she told that we cannot compare the situation of Jews in Germany with the situation of Russian speakers. Nowadays, another colleague, Sandra Kalniate, calmly tweets that, we, in brackets, we should take advantage of the window of opportunity that has opened to solve issues important to our people. That is, first of all, elimination of education in Russian and the demolition of the monuments to the liberators of Latvia from the Nazi invaders. Uh, to, for you to know, ethnic Russians make up 25% of the population of Latvia, but the Russian-speaking linguistic minority makes up to 37% of the country's population. This part of the country's population is mixed in origin. Some represent the descendants of the citizens of the Republic of Latvia, which existed between two world wars, and some represent the labor migrants of the Soviet era. Uh, among voters, there are uh, about 25% of Russian-speaking citizens, since 12% of the whole country's populations are in possession of so-called aliens passports and uh, are not eligible to vote. When speaking about window of opportunity, the Latvian colleague just underlined that we can now achieve our goals without much international attention. Therefore, I guess international attention is needed to the problem. So the goals she spoke about are to suppress and marginalize the country's Russian-speaking population. Latvian society is sinking in the wave of hate speech in the mainstream media and social networks. Columnists and commentators openly compare Russian-speaking compatriots with animals, fifth column, aggressive occupiers. One of the members of national parliament of the ruling coalition openly called for ethnic cleansing, aiming at increasing the proportion of ethnic Latvians in the country's population. The signatures are collected on a petition for the expulsion of disloyal citizens from the country, I am among them, and deprivation of their Latvian citizenship as well as on a petition for a ban of my party, Latvian Russian Union, standing for the protection of the rights of Russian-speaking minority. The European Union nominally has an instrument to combat this kind of manifestation. This is a council framework decision as, as of 2008 on combating certain forms and expressions of racism. This document does not have direct effect. It obliges the states to criminalize the 
respective acts in their legislation. And the Latvian Criminal Code has an article punishing incitement to national, ethnic, and racial hatred. The crux of the matter is that this article is only selectively applied in my country. Appeals to the police and state security bodies regarding the use of hate speech and calls for violence against Russian-speaking residents of Latvia are completely fruitless. Consistent refusals to initiate criminal proceedings are coming in. At the same time, charges of allegedly inciting hatred against the titular population have been brought against several journalists writing in Russian, the most prominent of them being Yuri Alexeyev and Vladimir Linderman. The government has prepared a package of initiatives to destroy memorials dedicated to the soldiers of the Soviet Army who liberated Latvia from Nazi occupation during World War II. About 150,000 Soviet soldiers died in the battles for the liberation of Latvia. In almost every family of Russian-speaking Latvians, and in many Latvian families, the memory of the victims of the war and the ancestors who fought on the side of anti-Hitler coalition is preserved. Through this initiative, demolition of monuments, people are deprived of the opportunity to preserve their memory, their historic memory, the memory of their families. Thanks to the efforts of our party, Complaints were submitted to the United Nations Human Rights Committee and the temporary settlement was requested. So a ban of the demolition of eight monuments until the complaints were finalized. All, all these requests were grant, granted by the committee. However, the government ignored this decision stating that it was only advisory in nature. During last summer and autumn, more than 70 monuments to the liberators of Latvia from German fascist occupiers were dismantled. I was among those who addressed the committee. Fate so decreed that the land on which one of the monuments stood belonged to man, my ancestors, victims of the Holocaust, Jewish family killed during Nazi occupiers. Please show the, the slide. Yeah. This is a monument in the city of Rezekne, eastern part of Latvia, former Vizeps Gubernia. Many people know Vizeps by Mark Chagall. My grandmother was studying in St. Petersburg University together with Mark Chagall, and she then uh, lived in Russia and remained alive, only one of the whole family, being in Latvia and being persecuted uh, as Jews. So, in addition to the demolition of the World War II monuments, maybe, uh, please, go ahead. Yes, this, this was demolition of Alosha. Yeah. Also, other monuments became victims. This, this one is in Riga, in our capital, in the park, Pushkin Monument. Yeah, created by one sculptor living in the Netherlands in Maastricht of Russian origin, Taratinov, Alexander Taratinov. And the, this monument was recently dismantled. You see, before dismantling the uh, actions like this, and then, then dismantled. So the fight against monuments of the past continues with repressions against people living in Latvia today. Some of the elderly people are under risk to become illegals. 
The new ret retroactive norm provides annulation in the case of bad knowledge of Latvian language, the permanent residence permission for those who acquired the citizenship of Russia. But most grave consequences of the use of this window of opportunities affect the young generation. The ongoing destruction of minority education has started in 1995 for higher education, then continued in 2004 for secondary education and 2018 primary education. But the latest amendments to the education law, just using this window of opportunities after events of January 22, deemed to abolish the education in Russian language and other minority languages. We have few Polish schools and uh, one Belarusian, one Ukrainian in total. And the ILT will apply even for private schools, not only public. I will conclude my intervention with a fragment of the video clip produced by our team in 2003, 20 years ago, when the mass protests of Russian speakers against education reform has started. With the kind permission of Roger Waters, the fragments of the famous Pink Floyd clip, The Wall, were used. You can see this fragment of the video. So we continue to fight and we believe that the wall of prohibition of minority education in Europe will finally be finished because we are true standing for the rights of cultures and one of them is just our right of Russian speakers to have education in our native language. Thank you.